Uh, okay, writing a node library in Rust. Just recently uh, written. Uh, Metlo is an open source API security tool you can set up in less than 15 minutes that inventories your endpoints, detects bad actors, and blocks malicious traffic in real time. There's no way you're setting it up in less I, than 15 minutes. I, that's like, saying, my... like, we should test this fake news. I, I Honestly, I don't want to test it because two hours in, I'm going to be too upset to say <laughs> to stop. But also, uh, we do this by shipping an agent that integrates with any tech stack that analyzes and blocks API traffic as it's coming in. Okay. The issue that we uh, needed to make our agent support a ton of platforms like Nginx, Node, Kubernetes, Go, AWS traffic monitoring, etc. So either we could rewrite you our put agent. Three dots after an etc. like that? Shouldn't it just be one? It actually, no, to properly do an etc., you have to do two etc. Et etc., right? etc. True. Yeah. So normally you just do it twice. You don't, you don't ellipse for dramatic pause and etc. <laughs> Nice. Just throw that out there. Stop talking about my nods, chat. Okay, I'm just I'm I'm an empathetic listener. Okay. I like God. how we do one video together and people are just like, look at TJ nodding along as Prime He's is wrong about a concept. Guy. Hey, at least I, at least they're dunking on me and not you. You're just true. being a nice guy. They're like, look how nice TJ mm -hmm. is when Prime's such a dummy. I'm true. sitting over there. I mean, but it feels like then that all the, I, I didn't say anything. All I did was just nod the whole time. I have no val. I mean, empty head. I know. Look like at that empty head. You've got to see through. Is that a skateboard ramp underneath that <laughs> underneath that hat? So either we could rewrite our agent, or we could be smart about it. I nice. love the spice. I love the spice of that statement. <laughs> uh, in, in came Rust with its ability to create C compatible library that could be uh, that could then be consumed by various FFI libraries on required language, or using low latency communication systems like gRPC or pipes. Nice. I'm confused at this whole gRPC and low latency uh, talk, <laughs> just because gRPC is, I mean, uses HTTP two. You know. So, well, I mean, compared to like JSON RPC, it's probably low latency, right? Well, I, can, can't you just say you don't know, right? Like, are you communicating to the backbone and you're on the backbone? True. Or are you communicating in a place that be has anywhere. crappy internet shooting through Elon satellites bouncing across the world? Like, I don't know what's happening. Uh, here we'll explore how we did this for Node.js using a Rust-based library called the Neon. I've heard about this Neon. I've actually been wanting to explore this. By the way, I work at Netflix. Did you know that, TJ? Holy cow, that seems really cool. I bet you get a free Netflix subscription. You will shut your mouth. And no, I don't. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, I, I try to self-promote me working at Netflix almost as much as you self-promote the fact that you stream on Twitch.tv. Me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I do stream. Yeah, That's I know. funny that you mention it. Crazy. Uh, yeah, so I've actually, I'm, I'm going to be investigating Neon because I hear that you can, you can it's, it's actually pretty dang easy. So I'm actually, I, I like this. This is kind of exciting. This actually, uh, this article has gotten excep exceptionally more exciting. So what is Neon? I'm ready. As described by Neon itself. By the way, we need to quit calling things Neon. There is entirely, you cannot search up the word Neon. Uh, <laughs> Plus it's like spelled the same as the actual, like yeah. people do look up real Neon things too. You there's know? also Neon, the database provider. Yep. There's, there's just too many things called Neon. Uh, as described by True. Neon itself, Neon is a library and tool chain for embedding Rust into your Node.js apps and libraries. So essentially, Neon enables us to run Rust code along with and inside our Node.js code. Let's look at a timing example here. NPM init, Neon, hello world, yeah. That's kind of cool. I didn't realize you could do that. They're Does just that... using NPM. I mean, isn't this 2023? Why not like discuss the various merits of the different package managers? You're right, because we should have considered Yarn or PNPM. Both yeah. harder to say and spell than NPM. Yeah. All right. Well, whatever. Whatever. Uh, don't worry. <laughs> it's 2023. Lots of lots of time left in 2023. We'll have a fourth one soon. Don't worry, TJ. I do hope so. I yeah, think it's going to be I called so. Neon, which is crazy. <laughs> neon, <laughs> neon, and it, Neon, Neon, that's why, <laughs> Neon. <laughs> NPM install neon uh or neon install neon uh this sets up an npm package with the starter code for a, uh see for setting up a rust library here's the build cargo file okay beautiful 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 blah 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 dependencies yep. got one of those uh the important bits that cdy lib part yep the like lib yep that's yeah, the thing that. that makes it special mm -hmm. and then you also need this thing right here so this is actually nodes api 
Staff uh, six nappy. Yeah, nappy. I always called it nappy, but it's Node API. It's kind of like Malik. Nice. It's it's not Malik. Just... It's M Alec. <laughs> I'm glad you beat. I'm glad you beat me to the punch on that one. I was going to bring it up again. <laughs> Don't want to. Uh, nothing uh, too interesting here. But take notice of the crate type is not a standard bin or lib. QTJ, but rather oh. C die lib, which must mean C dynamic library. I think so. Yeah. Okay. What this means is yeah. that Rust will create a C compatible dynamic library. In addition, there's a dependency already inserted for Neon. Target the Node API version six, so the module will run fine on Node 10.0 and onwards. Full compatibility matrix here. Oh gosh, there's a matrix. Oh, I'm seeing, I'm seeing numbers, TJ. Uh, okay, yeah. where was I? Do you know where I was? We were on six. Oh, which tab? We were reading about neon. Oh, it's just the back button. Sorry, I thought I opened it in a new one. I'm stupid. Oh, Don't gotcha. worry about it. What about the starter nice. code that got generated? Source lib. Okay, this looks good. This looks nice. Okay, context string, function context. Oh, cool. This actually is. It's actually that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. I, I'm not. A, I'm yep. not upset about it. So we have a function that takes uh, that has the neon main attribute. Note that the function uh, that's attributed as such doesn't necessarily need to have the name main. That has one parameter, CX, which is a type module context. This is essentially making an equivalent of node module here. And then within the module, we can export functions as we would in node project. Have you ever built a uh, node native module? Oh, I don't know. I've written I've written stuff that runs on node, but I don't know if I've actually had to do the very first step. I don't know how anything actually works. I just hope that the like NPM run build works on whatever JavaScript project I pulled out. <laughs> You know, I hope this, you know, uh, last week I spent over a day trying to get ESM to play nicely. I, I know that that's the word that you've said a lot of times, and I just know that I've run into that before, and that's usually when I just quit. <laughs> I asked somebody else, or if we're not using that dependency. <laughs> it's just the worst thing in the universe. I'm like, I'm, I'm not a JavaScript boy. You know, like, I'm going to, I just write this JavaScript for this one thing, and then if it doesn't, if it doesn't run... <laughs> then I, that's somebody else's problem i'll just i'll talk to devops i'm not a build expert okay i'm not a build master as it used to be called yeah uh this is essentially making an equivalent of a node module here and then within that module we can export functions as we would in the node project here we do that with the function hello so this is pretty much identical to how you do a c plus plus one as well very very yeah. similar you kind of say like hey i want to export this function it's named this here's the function handler I'm, yep. I don't... This is super common as well. Like um, I've seen this a bunch before for doing it with Lua as well, because I've done a bunch of like FFI stuff with Lua and Rust. Yeah, looks it looks pretty similar. Uh, I will yep. say that I hate this convention with a passion that all on the same line, both what you're doing plus a return statement. If only there was a key word that would describe your intention of your code as opposed cool. to its floating placement within everything. Uh, anyways. Let's close. Let's just close the article. Honestly, who puts those <laughs> on the same line? I know that it's. This is more offensive than an if statement with no squirrely brace. <laughs> That's true. It is. It's just like it is the, the epitome of the most offensive code I've seen in a long time. Uh, anyways. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Uh, the hello function itself takes a mutable parameter context of the type function context that exports a JS result of type JS string. In that function, we return a result containing a JS string. The result automatically gets cast to a JS result. Also, note that JS string is constructed within the context of the parameter CX. So the string constructed here is a valid JS string, not necessarily a Rust style string. So in other words, JavaScript needs to be able to have the context of it. It needs to be able to store it right. on a heap. It needs to be able to keep track of it. That's why you have to. That's why I assume you can create a bunch of Rust stuff, go real fast on the Rust stuff, and then at the end you yep. create the little context stuff and then go yeah, forth. Yeah, you and just prosper. basically write your whole library and then you just write like ten wrapper functions. I'm yeah. guessing that's what they're going to tell us. Yeah. yeah. NPM run build. I can't, can't. No way it works. This command generates an <laughs> artifact by the name of index.node. Oh, strange. Uh, this contains okay. <laughs> all the exported Rust code and what we'll be using with Node to communicate with. Now that we have the it's artifact not built, index.node today. <laughs> <laughs> Bingo card of 2023 has been wild. Okay, <laughs> this is and this is one of them. All right, now that we have the artifact build, let's add an index.js file which we'll use to test our code. All right get this one and then we can go hello by the way not using import statements in 2023 offense well who knows what b building thing they're using i still don't know how i still don't know the difference between require and import 
<laughs> okay, so require is a function that can be used whoa, anywhere. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> As we can see, it outputs this. Okay, nice. We'll rock on. Uh, a more comp uh, complex example here. Okay, so we can do a bunch of stuff. We can do anime chan response. Okay. I see why they put return values on the same line. Uh, a result vector anime chan response request a request error. Okay, blah, blah, blah. No one cares. Get anime quote. Okay, nobody. Did they really choose? This is like, this isn't, wait, this isn't like their official thing for Neon. Or is it their official thing for Neon? No, this is the official thing for this article. Okay, but wait, it's for real. They chose like all the examples in the world. They're like, let's make it anime, anime chan. An anime quote generator. <laughs> okay all right that's not it is i mean it's okay, it's I don't, okay. the ocean's wide okay tj some parts yeah. of the ocean's a little stranger than other parts all right all right yeah you know it's, I don't know. i'm I, not i mean i'm not like opposed to it i just was all of a sudden i i blinked and you were like saying anime chan <laughs> i was wondering where we went from index.node to anime chan <laughs> weeps weeps get weeps. out get out weeps <laughs> Oh, no. oh man, okay. it's, it's a strange, it's, it's a strange, it's a strange, strange place to be. That's a yep. solid block of code. What are we doing here? Let's look at the major component. By the way, with all that code and the fact that the top of this article says six minute read tells me one <laughs> thing that ain't nobody reading that anime code. Uh, ah, that's a rust code. Time to scroll. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Request. Uh, that's a solid block of code. What are we doing here? <laughs> Let's look at the major components. I didn't look at any of these components, but you get the idea. <laughs> We, we, we get all of this, okay? No, I haven't been to Anime-chan. Malosh.space. <laughs> not, not, not one I'm familiar with. I'm not familiar, but you get the idea, okay? We do a little bit of this, we do a little bit of that, get some of that, and then we have a main that simply exports this uh, and do that. Okay, good. Corresponding node code, get Swappy Starship. What? Axios, anime title. All right, uh, ID, fetch Rust, fetch uh, Axios, test Rust, test... Uh, okay, okay. There we go. Look at that. You familiar with any of that? Everything looks okay, good. Okay, so they're trying. They're just trying it with two different ones. They're like, let's fetch some. Let's fetch some stuff with Russ. Let's fetch some stuff with Axios and see which one is good. Is that yeah. what they just did? Well, they also put a start and stop on each one, and I think they're saying like they're like, timing it. They're timing yeah. it, which is this is not a very okay. great time the timing thing. There's just the, just just a few requests, but okay, yep. And the results are this. I know again. If anything has ever said micro benchmarks can manipulate, can make any point ever, this would this is truly the greatest micro benchmarks can make any point ever argument. Is this not just like, it's not most of the time just waiting for an <laughs> HTTP response? Yeah, you can see it's a little bit faster. Did you see that? Okay, guys, they're gonna say this isn't worth it for this case. True, agree. <laughs> okay, <laughs> nice. <laughs> But the speed is definitely not worth it. Well, because there is no speed. This is a made. <laughs> this is made up. There's nothing here. Okay. Run it again, All and right. it will be a different result. Anyways, there is. Uh, this difference is much more visible on CPU heavy tasks, where Rust's inherently lean nature and ability to leverage multiple threads shine even more. Let's try a few more rejects. Can okay. I just say something? Yes. For like, if if you're writing an article, this is just like a piece of advice personally, and your first example is saying. It doesn't make a difference. I would recommend not having that be your first example. <laughs> I just like, I'm not trying to dunk on the article. I'm just saying like in terms of providing a compelling article that would make you want to finish and not just finish because we want to publish this to YouTube and so that people click like and subscribe on the prime time Uh And maybe TJ? don't DP. Yeah. <laughs> oh, teach TV is also a good channel. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's just kind of it's just kind of weird, right? Like you should there's these other ones are probably actually going to be a big difference. So why would you pick the one that's not a big difference? Yeah, I, I think what you'd want to say here is, look at this. What's the difference between these two pieces of code? Well, as you can yeah. see, they're, they look they look identical pretty much, right? Yeah. So I like that I can write the other part in Rust. Like that part's cool. Like I would have just yeah. shown how to use it. I think instead of trying to like compare the performance, that yeah. seems better, right? And I also would have probably provided uh, maybe similar APIs so they look identical. So you can be like, oh, yeah. yeah, like, look at that. They're the same thing underneath the hood. It is true that it's cool that you can just basically be like, hey, these yeah. look exactly the same. You'd never know that this inner part's in Rust. That yeah. part's cool. Yeah, that part's really, okay. really cool. But yeah. uh, don't ever compare network requests to some service you don't control. 
Yeah. Right. Like that's just it's just it's just not it's just not a thing you want to do because it just always will look bad. All right. Let's uh, create a similar package uh, as we did above. But let's see. They're going to add regexes, which I'm I'm a little offended by right now. I just want <laughs> you to know really, that like they really made this article for you. <laughs> <laughs> The first one is like, what if we request anime quotes and compare the performance? And then next up, we do unlicensed regex comparisons. <laughs> it's like they knew everything that's going to trigger me and put it all into one article. <laughs> they did it. They did it. Um, all right. Anyway, so we have all this fun stuff. A uh, bunch of, oh, look at that. A little Huckleberry Finn going on in there. Uh, nice. Okay. Uh, let's see. Read to string. So uh, apparently a bunch of reading to strings going on here. I'm not exactly mm -hmm. sure, but they're... Uh, there must be a bunch of bunch of stuff. All right, so process this regex. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's see, measure. Okay, so I guess we're doing a measuring going on right here as well. A little as sex F64. Okay, also add this regex crate. Okay, so we're going to be doing some sort of uh, you know, regex pattern going on. Okay. Makes sense. They're just going to compare how fast the regexes are, I'm assuming. And, like, Rust yep. should probably be fast, I'm assuming. Yep, and they have a bunch of stuff in here. By the way, G in... Uh, the G command inside of uh, JavaScript is not necessarily doing what you think it's doing. It's it's kind of it's kind of wild. It's a stateful command, so what you get out will actually it, it yeah. will actually flop back and forth. It's really it's it's <laughs> not. It, JavaScript really said like let's make our regexes stateful. <laughs> what? That was like they were like what if we made regexes mutable and stateful? What if we did that? Hey, man, it's a push-down automata. Of course it's stateful. Everybody knows that. It's just like, why would you do this to us? So anyways, they're going to go through. They're going to do all this one. Uh, so apparently they grabbed a bunch of timings. None of this should be surprising at all. Um, so blah, 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 right? Fantastic. Improved ratio, right? No time. Like, I don't know. Again, I don't think you can really... Some of them are worse. Yeah, some of them apparently are worse, which it just, again, just shows me that you're paying tax on things you don't understand. Right? Like, why is this Rust one that much worse? My guess is because what's really truly happening is that this thing's matching a bunch of times. And because this thing's matching a bunch of times and Node is lazy, you're getting you're getting the results in this very lazy way versus maybe the other one's yeah. not lazy. And so you're only getting one result from Node versus X results from Rust. I don't know. Right? That is like the weirdest regex, too. Something that starts with A through Q. Q. And then, but doesn't have not U through Z for the thirteen of those, and then an X. Yeah. So just just so I understand, this is starting with A through Q, and then thirteen more things, as long as they don't contain U through Z. Am I correct on that? Yes. Anything that's not U through Z, and then an X. Well, that's one. It's a pretty common one for me, so I probably will stick with the Node.js regex <laughs> engine. I think that's a pretty common kind of thing that I'm searching for in my books. <laughs> Your books are beautiful. <laughs> that's a pretty interesting result card. The performance ranges from 0.14x to 19.76x oh, no. with an average of 6.1 improvement. Also, the 14 out of 17 regexes show... Uh, is it? I thought the plural of regexes was regrets. Hmm. It's regerts. It's regerts. No regerts. Yeah. Uh, show better mm -hmm. performance on Rust compared to Node uh, regerts engine. Uh, an interesting thing I, to can note. Can I just say again? Like, they said, like, an average, like, they ran a test suite that represents, like, normative regex running over projects. They're like, well, we have a suite of regex that we've, you know, custom picked from, you know, millions of regex examples. But they're like, they said it like 6.1x, like you can probably expect on average to have a 6.1x improvement for the Rust regex crate. <laughs> Again, micro benchmarks. <laughs> what does that mean? What do you, what, what agenda do you want to prove? I'll make you one for the just that, right? Like it just, it's right, just... like they could have just picked a bunch more with whatever the weird thing that made it slow for the A through Q one. <laughs> and then be like, like, Rust is seven times slower than JavaScript. Node.js proven to be 10x faster than blazingly fast Rust. Yeah. Ooh, that's actually a really good idea for a YouTube video. <laughs> just the right? Like the video proving... is literally JavaScript is seven times faster than Rust. And then just like go through this and be like, look at this, look at that, look at this. And then end with, no, you're stupid. That's not how it works. <laughs> right? I feel yeah. like that's a good one. I feel like there's something good there. I don't know. Maybe I'll make that. Yeah. 
All right. I like it. Oh, we're going to pi digits, baby. Let's do something a bit oh, more implementation a... agnostic and try to calculate the nth digits on pi. For example, the benchmarks game the algorithm used in the variant of the sequential spigot algorithm. Spigot's the little uh, turny thing, right? That you get water yeah, on and off with. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know this algorithm. Uh, we will be using a rug crate. Okay. Oh, rug. For, for working with arbitrary Is that because all integers. the crypto stuff's made in Rust these days or what? Maybe? <laughs> I don't know. If they would have just chosen uh, Zig, they could have just done an I-72 and just got it done with. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, true. It, it, by the way, that is by far the weirdest thing about Zig. It's just like, <laughs> well, what size of ints do you have? All of them. Oh, well, you want a, a 167? Fine by me. Go for it. 167. I can make that image. happen. <laughs> just like, what? I can make that happen. <laughs> Why? All right, so here's some Rust code. They're just doing calculating pi. We don't need to try to understand this. Again, yep. six-minute average on read up top. I don't believe this. Uh, and the wrapper <laughs> for running the Rust code in Node. Okay, looks good. Find pi 10,000. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, all right, let's see. Here's the node code. Okay, do all that crap. Bada, bada, bop, bop, bop. And then we run it. So I can tell you some things right away that are incorrect about this. Uh, so there you go. Node, massively slower. So one thing that's very unique about node is for it to be able to uh, uh, optimize itself, it depends on how many characters are inside of a function. So since this thing has, well, a lot of characters and it's not minified, which white space makes a difference, you're going to have this whole issue going on where it probably will need like 17, 20 times to be ran before it actually does the JIT optimization, which means that you're running it once and taking the value. So it's kind of a slightly unfair. I didn't know Node was white space sensitive. That's that's news a lot to of me. The, it's not Node. It's V8. I, if, well, V8 was white space sensitive. I assume it still is white space sensitive, right? Like it's... Well, it's also just not how like... Like it's it doesn't just run something one time and then think now it's time to optimize right? Is that not am, well? No, am I because crazy, it, right? because jitting is a really expensive operation because compiling is really right. expensive. So <clears throat> you do, yeah. wouldn't want to just jit everything you see because what happens if you get different arguments every time? So right. they have to keep track of the type of arguments. That's why Node uses yep. so much memory, and it's not Node; it's actually V8 because they keep track of. Mm -hmm. Well, it's also Node, but they just keep track of so much stuff to optimize every single function possible. Right. Because if it's monomorphic, they need to figure that out after X amount of calls, and then they go, "Okay, right. this thing's monomorphic. I can optimize it." Blah blah blah. And so yeah, you just jit your pants. A lot of people jit their pants, especially as they get older. Mm -hmm. It's totally normal. It is. Yeah, that's an 18x improvement. <laughs> Not too bad. Yeah, I, I mean, I would ensued, assume interpreted JavaScript is by far the slowest possible thing out there. Uh, you yeah. can also see some of V8 stuff. So if you're curious about this, there's a trace flag you can pass into Node that will print out V8 tracings. And you can also do it with like that Chrome. Hmm. It's not Chrome inspect. I forget what it is. But oh, there's like a, the performance. There's some performance tabby thing. Uh, yeah, it's not in the inspect one. It's like a separate place you can go, uh, Profetto. Yeah. Uh, and you can go and look at the Profetto stuff, and you can actually enable tracing on V8, and V8 will tell you a bunch of stuff. It will also tell you why it is and isn't optimizing. And so yeah. at some point, I had to go break down why one of our libraries wasn't running fast. And it's just like, well, look at this. It, it only optimizes after, like, the 9,000th call because this function is 400 lines long. Like, yes. Mm -hmm. Just don't do that. Just make it just just yep. make it smaller. Uh, let's see how we use the Makes bindings sense. at Metlo. These bindings make it possible to have a core library with battle tested code while still having uh, native performance. This enables to support multiple frameworks more or less out of the box with the configuration requirements. I mean, this is cool. I like this. Yes, this is good. Agreed. Yeah, fastify all that. All right. I'm not gonna read this. Uh, sorry or congratulations. But how do you feel about this whole thing? What's your takeaway from this, TJ? Well, what I wish, like, they, I, I'd be interested. I guess, like, the main thing is actually Neon, not really Metlo for this, which is fine. Like, I would have liked to see how does, like, Rust enums, how do those get taken from Rust, go into JavaScript land? Because, like, the, only, the reason that I would want to write Rust for it is that I have probably some performance critical part or some part that is, like, really complicated that i would like to solve like rust type system to help me solve right that we have some sort of part of our application where it's like oh yeah, we always do this and then get that like yeah. we've been doing it okay so we know that it needs to go fast now can how can we make it fast but also still not have to delete every single line of javascript we've ever written even though obviously that would be the best course of action best course um so i just don't that's the part that's like interesting to me especially for someone who actually has a real company that's doing things right not like oh i have a fun side project 
and I was the only one who did it and it was fun. Okay, cool, 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 cool. But like, what does it look like if you're real? So I don't know. So that's kind of where for me, like those were the things I was interested in seeing more about. Yeah. Not anime chan. Anime chan. No offense, anime chan didn't happen. Yeah, I think the I, I always think that the performance angle as like the primary selling point, it's like only if there's a huge negative, right? Like so yeah. if, if calling <laughs> the Rust code results in a hundred X worse performance, but you want to use it because it is a hundred X nicer to use. Yeah. Yep. As far as like the, the enums, I bet you I could just answer that. It, anything returned from this API has to fall into a JavaScript value. And since JavaScript doesn't have type discriminated values, you have to create your own type discriminators. So you'd have mm. to probably return it as an object with like type, my type right. And then you value, could like do something with it afterwards. Value. Yeah. Then you'd yeah, have to return that makes the sense. Yeah. So you just create your own wrapper. That's all you'd have to do. Yeah. If only, like, I would do this if I had some part that was, like, really memory intensive, too, I guess. Because you could really, like, cut down a lot on your memory usage if there was a lot of, like, you have one struct and you need to do, like, a lot of stuff with it. And then you get out one struct. You could totally imagine doing that part in Rust and then and then dealing with it there. That part would be cool. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, so that's ex that's actually precisely why I was looking into this. It's because it's just, like, well... I keep having four gigabytes of of memory. How do I stop yes. having four gigabytes of memory? My current answer is actually I import the V8 garbage collector, and then I manually manage memory by setting everything to null. Oh, nice. That's and pretty much calling JavaScript. Yeah, yeah. So after every line, I have these functions called drain that will drain an array in reverse and then and then null it out and then uh what's it called and then uh call garbage collection just to keep my nice. memory down so i got it down to so that it's like it went from like two gigabytes to 200 megabytes and so i'm like nice. all right rock on this is great but yep. it's also literally 10 15 seconds slower because i'm just like right. garbage collecting yeah, just garbage to, collecting dude it's just yeah. the worst it's just the worst and then the worst part is because it's on it's on a server i have to make you have to pay this expense in Node where you actually have to create a bunch of workers to run your right. code because if you didn't, every time it garbage collects, all the things would stop. Stop, and so, right. like You, you just get big pause. You yeah. get just big pauses for everything. So it's just, it's just, it's just Im impossible. Impossible. Yeah. Anyways, all right. I'd use this. I'd use Neon. I think I, Neon's I a compelling option. I think um, I've actually, I think the use case of having a really easy story of writing <clears throat> like JavaScript or some other like more scripty style language and then having parts of your application being in Rust, but it's like, uh, you know, it's not, no one has to know that it's in Rust. They just call it like regular JavaScript functions. It's really nice. I've been doing this for some NeoVim stuff where I write like a lot of um, stuff that like talks to a database or like makes GraphQL requests or all these other things has to handle what kind of things we get back when we graphql. I write all that in Rust and then I have a shared library or like inter process communication. And then I do all the just like boring scripty mutability of state of like the editor yeah. stuff for any of them all in Lua. And it works really nice because you know that it's actually going to give you the data that you expect from Rust. And then I don't care about type safety for like which window is getting opened i just like make sure that that seems pretty good like yeah. that's a nice combo yeah but that's exactly what a scripting language is good at which is yeah. i don't want to have to think about anything this is why i use scripting language right i don't want to yes. I, 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 I is your window id zero perfect current window make it happen yeah <laughs> right? Like, exactly. right exactly you don't yep. have to think about anything what is current window right. i don't like, know i've been I holding on to it for a while the global messages that I've received from this thing. Okay, well, cool. Just do it. Like, do, yeah. oh, I have to make static const. Oh, I need to await. Oh, I need a lot. Oh my goodness. Now I'm going to send this over here. It's not yeah. send. I got to make sure that my, you know, yeah. actually, I don't care. Let's just have some tables and some lists and we'll call, we'll call it good. <laughs> Get your arch, arc mutacy out of here. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Well, hey. Oh, there's definitely, <clears throat> there's definitely a good meme somewhere in there with Rust Arc. And, uh, uh, oh my goodness, now I can't, uh, a mutalisk. Uh, definitely some sort of mutalisk going on in here. You could have some sort of mutalisk and have an arc mutalisk. <sighs> I feel like nice. this would definitely, there's, there's definitely something here. There's like here. 30 people who will get that joke on Twitter. It so is... it's going to really kill. <laughs> this is, it's a great joke. Okay. This is a great it's joke. It's pretty good for a joke that you made up instead of stealing from my Twitter. <laughs> 
Still came. Oh man, you like doubled my tweet. It hurts. Oh, oh I did just double it. I I crushed you. All right. I know. All right. Hey, thank you for. Oh, they're calling it a boomer joke. That's not a boomer joke. The name. This is the boomerigin. <laughs> the boomerigin.